Hi, I'm Elaine Harding. Welcome to my blog at stampwithelaine.com. Today's project is this fold flat bridge card and on the back there is stamped images which I'll explain about later. I'm using the Autumn Goodness Bundle. This is the stamp set and these are the dies that match. I love that the fence and the wheelbarrow uh, has some markings on it so when you die cut the fence or the wheelbarrow it actually incorporates and embosses the wood grain on it as well. For today's card we'll be using this die, the wheel and the wheelbarrow. The inks I'm using are Memento Tuxedo Black ink, Cajun Craze Mint Macaron, Early Espresso and Crumb Cake. Stamping blends in Cajun Craze Pumpkin Pie, Mint Macaron, Crumb Cake and Mango Melody. I'm also using the greenery embossing folders. There are two patterns and they are half size and the pattern we're using is this one to emboss this bit here and as you can see it's not long enough so I'll show you how to join them up. The designer series paper I'm using comes from the Gilded Autumn Specialty Designer Series paper and they're gold foiled on one side and plain on the other. My stamparatus for stamping with. I've already set it up. Now let's run through the cardstock. The card base is eight and a quarter inches by four and a quarter. That's 21 centimeters by 10.8 centimeters. Bring in the scoreboard and you want to score with the long side at the top. That's the eight and a quarter inches at the top. You want to score at one and three eighth inches, two and three quarter inches, five and a half inches and at six and seven eighth inches. So the reason I flip my card stock over is because the card is going to bend this fold this way. Then you need eight pieces of early espresso for the side panels here on the front and the back so four for the front and four for the back cut at one and a quarter inches by four and one eighth inches in metric that's 3.2 by 10.5 centimeters two early espresso pieces cut at two and five eighths by four and one eighth in metric that's 6.7 by 10.5 and that is for the front panel and one for the back panel. For the front panel, you need two pieces of Gilded Autumn Specialty Designer Series paper. One and one eighth by four inches in metric that's 2.9 by 10.2 centimeters. I've left these blank because you won't see it as it's on the side. For the second layer, this is in berry vanilla, two and a half by four inches. That's 6.4 by 10.2 centimetres and you need one for the front and one for the back. For the side panels, um, I've cut them as one piece so that you can stamp it and then cut it in half to fit these two mat layers. So this measures two and a quarter by four inches that's 5.7 by 10.2. You stamp the wheat sheaf first and you also stamp the pumpkin vignette on this piece and then cut it in half afterwards. So I'll show that to you later. The last bit is the bridging piece. This is a mint macaron and it measures one and three eighths by five and a half. In metric that's 3.5 by 14 centimeters. Bridge mat layer two. This is in Cajun craze and it's cut at one and a quarter by five and three eighths. In metric that's 3.2 by 13.7. Don't worry about the measurements, I've got it over on my blog. I'll give you a link um, below the video to my blog post 
and you can get the measurements from there. So first of all we're going to glue this to the card. And I'll speed this up. This is my front. Um, to differentiate the front and the back, I'm going to adhere the design series paper to the two end panels. Now make sure you don't mix up the um, two pairs of very vanilla because this one for the centre panel is slightly larger than the ones for the two side panels. Bring in my Stamparatus and you also need some scrap of very vanilla cardstock. I'm going to pop that at the top, bring in my early espresso ink, ink up the sentiment at the top. Swap ink pads to crumb cake and I'm going to use the wheat sheaf. Keep my cardstock on here because this is a photopolymer stamp and you need to stamp it with a cushion. So I'm going to stamp one there and another one just off centre. Then glue it to the front of the cards. Now I'm going to stamp the back while I've got the Stamparatus out and again I've set up my Stamparatus. This time I'm using Cajun Craze. Stamp on from the top hinge and I'm going to flip the plate over and stamp on the other side. That's the beauty of the Stamparatus. It has two stamping surfaces, um, one on each side. The plates have also got a etched grid, which makes it easy to line the stamps up. And then pop it back uh, at right angles to the Stamparatus and stamp pop my other piece of cardstock, the one that I need for the panels here. I'm going to stamp in Tuxedo Black Memento ink because I'm using uh, stamping blends which are alcohol markers. So I'm going to stamp the wheat sheaf so that it misses the lettering. And then at the same time I'll stamp this in the centre. Set that aside and stamp on this other piece the pumpkin vignette in Tuxedo Black Memento ink. Ink it up. Now there's just a little bit more stamping to do. There's the wheelbarrow and these flowers here. The beauty of a Stamparatus is that once you set up your stamp and stamped and die cut the image, you have a template and then you can cut blanks and simply put the blanks back in this exact spot, anchor your paper so it doesn't move then ink up your stamp and stamp in the blank and you have a perfectly stamped piece again and it just makes stamping and die cutting a lot faster. So you see I've done the same for the wheelbarrow and out of the spare piece of cardstock I cut another wheelbarrow at the same time and a wheel. So all I have to do is pop this back inside the frame and also the wheel 
The wheel isn't perfectly round, so you have to find the right spot for it. Then ink up with um, early espresso ink. Make sure my paper doesn't move and stamp. Now we've got a bit of colouring to do and I'm going to colour the wheat sheaf in <coughs> Mango Melody. So I'll speed this up. Now to colour the pumpkin, Cajun Craze and Pumpkin Pie for the pumpkins. Mango Melody for the corn, mint macaron for the leaves, crumb cake for the basket, a combination of the mint macaron and mango melody for the pears and apples. Floral detail. I'm just going to be using Mango Melody, Cajun Craze, and Mint Macaron. Now that's all the colouring done, <clears throat> so we just need to pop a mini dimensional onto the wheel and this is a guide so you pop that across the wheelbarrow like so. Then with the flowers I'm just going to run a tiny bit of Tombow glue on the bottom here so you can attach it to the wheelbarrow like so. Grab the card and we'll adhere this piece to the back and if you want to write a sentiment or anything on it then do it now before you assemble the bridge. Now these two pieces we need to cut down. Bring in the mini trimmer so you need to cut it at one and one eighth which is between these two lines. And do the same for this one, one and one eighth. I've got to press record, but I've glued the cut pieces now to the back of the card like so. And make sure you've got them the right way round. You don't want to glue this one on this panel and this one on that. Okay, now we want to emboss um, this piece here and I want the leaves running this way so pop your cardstock in place your cardstock so that it's in line with that half leaf there at the end and this half leaf here on the right end um, it just makes joining up the two pieces a bit more seamless you need your platform one one of the platform threes and then your embossing folder with cardstock inside and another platform three and I'll go and run that through the machine and I'll be back. So now we want to join up the, um, the embossing so you see why it's important to have that right on the edge and accurate so that it will look seamless but the thing is if I do that this cardstock will extend beyond the width of the platform so I'm going to need to put it around this way now normally when you running uh, an embossing folder through the machine you don't want the hinged bit here to touch the sides so it's always advisable to have the seam running up north on your platform um, so it's always pointing in that, that direction the way you're winding your handle 
but we can't do that because this cardstock is too long so I'm going to put this on its side like so and platform three again and the beauty about the new stamp machine is that the width of this platform is actually wider than six inches so if you make sure you're putting your embossing folder and your platform more toward you so that it leaves the gap here at the top then it will protect the seam of your embossing folder okay so let's run that through so now we can adhere this piece to <coughs> the bridge base and you want the joined up bit more to the right so that the wheelbarrow will be on top of it and you won't see the seam. Now I like to use um, tear and tape or double sided tape and I'm putting this bridge unit here to give me a guideline as how far my tape should go up the side. And just cut that off. Then I'll put a bit on this side. Then I'll just run it across, but not all the way to the end. Do the same for this side. So remove the tape from this end first, I've removed that and then marry that up on the edge, lie that flat, make sure it's aligned to the edge, all right, nothing showing on the bottom or out the side, okay, then remove this bit here, remove all the tape from this side. Fold this over like so, marry it up on this side and just press down and hey presto you have your unit. Then for the wheelbarrow bit I'm going to pop dimensionals all on the bottom. I'll cut that off. So just glue on that bit there and make sure that's inside and voila the card is finished. Before I go I thought I'd show you another sample of I used the wheelbarrow die this one and then this wheel here so you cut out a blank and the spokes of the wheel on there and see how lovely that is, how the wood grain has come up um, and I've just done some chalk mark colouring on the card itself, embossed that with the Meadows embossing folder and just punched out some leaves with the Autumn punch pack. So that's another idea. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. All the links to the supplies is below this video in the show more section. I'll also put a link to my blog post which will have all the measurements for all the pieces of cardstock you need to cut. Thanks for joining me today and I'll be back with my countdown to Christmas series on Friday. Thanks for watching. Bye!